Most authorities on the sport of floor hockey agree that it is a distant relative of ice hockey. The early Greeks played a game similar to hockey over 2,500 years ago. Centuries later, the French played a game called hoquette, and the English played a game called hoquet. The Irish would later develop hurling, while Native Americans participated in stick and ball games such as lacrosse. The origins of floor hockey trace back to the 1950s, with the first indoor game being introduced in Battle Creek, Michigan in 1962. The game quickly spread to physical education teachers, coaches, and athletic directors across the United States. And in the 1970s, the sport was introduced in Sweden, where it was known as floorball. Floor hockey is a fast-moving, non-contact activity. It involves hand-eye coordination and helps to build cardiovascular endurance. The game includes manipulation of the puck, ball, or a similar object by a stick. With the stick, players can dribble, receive, pass, and shoot. This continuous movement stresses quick reaction time, foot speed, and agility. The object of the game is for the team in possession of the puck or ball to maneuver it through the defense of the opposing team, pass it by the goalkeeper, and shoot it into the goal cage. The defensive team tries to break up the attack, capture control of the puck, and move it back up the floor in an assault on the other team's goal. When preparing to play floor hockey, there are considerations regarding the length and composition of the stick, whether play will be indoor or outdoor, whether a puck or ball will be used, and what type of goals are going to be in place. Sticks come in various sizes and colors. These are usually made from straight blade plastic, polycarbonate plastic, fiberglass, with the length often depending on the age of the user. Goals in the physical education setting are often made from PVC piping and need to be relatively rugged for play. The opening of the goal should be at least 6 feet by 4 feet wide. The depth of the goal is usually anywhere from 18 inches to 44 inches deep. A puck or ball can be used in a floor hockey game. These are often made of various materials, usually plastic. Goalies typically wear a mask which protect the goalie's face from the ball or puck. A goalie stick, along with goalie pads, chest protectors, gloves, and blockers are used depending on the level of play. Floor hockey is played on an area about the size of a basketball court. A playing area typically includes side lines, a goal line, a center circle, a center line, and goals. Markings on the basketball court may be used for establishing rule requirements. If necessary, the surrounding walls can be used in order to provide more continuous action with limited stoppage of play. The standard number of players used in floor hockey is six. Bigger courts allow for more players as needed. Players include a goalie who is allowed in the crease, a center who covers the entire court, two forwards who play in the offensive half of the court, and two defenders who guard the defensive half of the court. Because the game of floor hockey is primarily a passing, receiving, and shooting game, it is essential that players master the technique of controlling the puck and keeping the puck close to the stick. Excessive hitting of the puck and long periods of controlling the puck can lead to undisciplined play. The techniques of floor hockey include shooting, passing, gaining possession, and defending. Shooting incorporates shots such as the drive or flick. The drive is used for power from a greater distance from the goal. Flicking is a finesse shot close to the goal whose purpose is to lift the puck high into the corners. Passing takes place via the forehand push pass from the dominant side of the blade, which is typically the most accurate. The backhand pass is used when the puck is on the back of the blade. Both are used for short passing situations. The motion used is the same by which the shot is taken, but the stick is never raised higher than the waist. Gaining possession involves a two-touch technique. The first touch stops the ball or puck, and the immediate second touch advances the ball or puck if necessary. Defending involves preparation, anticipation, and patience. Jabbing at the ball or puck from the opponent's stick is an effective strategy and can be combined with blocking. 
This is accomplished without swinging or chopping the stick. Goaltending needs a quick, agile anticipator of a player's movements. The goalie has the privilege of using the feet to stop or direct the puck when defending the goal. Hands may also be used to stop the puck if modified rules allow. However, the hands may not be used to pass the puck out of the crease. Major penalties include tripping, elbowing, throwing the stick, hooking, checking, intentional holding of a player, and intentional delay of game. Minor penalties include abuse of equipment, high sticking, holding, interference, out of play, offside, icing, stick lifting, kicking, and an illegal grip. There are many terms used in floor hockey. Some of the common ones include centering, or passing to a teammate who is in front of your opponent's goal, clearing, or getting the puck out of your zone to prevent your opponents from scoring. Face off, the start or restart of play when the official drops the puck between the sticks of two opponents to try to hit to one of their teammates or in the direction of the goal. Icing, which refers to a player on the defensive side of the floor sending the puck down the length of the floor with the puck crossing the designated line without being touched by a teammate. Power play, when a team with all of its players has an advantage over the team charged with a penalty, with who is playing with fewer players. For more information, consult the techs or a physical education professional. See you on the floor.